All right, praise the Lord. Welcome everyone. And um, before I give this word, I want to make sure that God takes complete control. Heavenly Father, in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ, I thank you and praise you this morning, Lord. I thank you for the gift of life, for putting breath in our lungs today, for redeeming us from darkness and blindness and death. And that is all because of your amazing love for all of us today. We ask you, Lord, to open our hearts and minds to truly hear what you have to say so that you and we, we're your sheep, that you're guiding us to the right way to go. And so help us truly be open and let none of us think that we stand and it's for someone else. Help us listen to it as, as a message for each one of us, including myself, because I know I need this word as much as anybody. And so I ask you to speak through me and bring glory to your name today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our opening verses, word for us today, Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, say he holds, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the gold, seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. Amen? Amen. That's a good thing. And you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. <laughs> and you have persevered. Amen? Amen. And have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Praise the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. I think we can relate to this, right? Amen. Amen. Yet he says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. What? He says, you've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Amen? Amen. Wow. But you see, we... It is wonderful to get a word from the Lord, even if it kind of feels like something is wrong, because that means he loves us. Amen? The Lord. And he, he guides us and, and keeps us going the right way, right? We never really want to believe that we're part of one of these other churches that he doesn't give just a straight-A report card. But no, we need to be open to hear what he has to say to us. And so, again, losing our first love repents. And the title of this is Lights Out. Amen? Amen. The tragedy of leaving our first love. Amen? Praise the Lord. Please, please, Lord, keep us open to this word today. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And we talk about this quite often, our sanctifying journey, the trials we go through, and everything else. Now, hope does not disappoint because here it is. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen? Amen. We don't have to love on our own strength. We have God poured his love into us. When we gave our life to Christ and he redeemed us, if you're anything like me, you felt nothing but God's amazing love. As a matter of fact, myself, I remember... That just after this happened to me, the church that I was a part of had a split. They all gathered together in one place and they started having talking about their issues and one side and another. And I was right in the middle, but I had just received the love of God in my heart. And everybody had a chance to talk, but I was the new guy. And when everything was done, I was sitting in the middle. And they said, well, what do you think, Brother Steve? And I said, I just love everybody. I don't, can't we all just get along? I couldn't understand all this strife and division and all that because I was full of the love of God. Amen? Amen. 
I didn't have any issue with anybody. I just wanted more of God and loving on everybody because that's what he gave each and every one of us. Amen? And I hope you can all relate to that. Amen? Amen. Okay. So right off the bat, this love, this first love that he gave us is what we are to carry with us. Amen? Amen. John 14 Verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if we have a love for God, and we talked about this in the last week, right? We want to honor God the right way if we love him and all of that. And so if you love me, keep my commandments. And again, in verse 21, he says, he who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You know I love his verses, right? Because this is my hope. This is all, should be all of our hope. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, losing our first love definitely includes our love for him. Amen? And if we love him, we keep his commandments. And his commandment is love. Amen? The greatest commandment of them all. Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, not a bunch of rules, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Amen. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen? Praise Amen. the Lord. I know we heard this word in 2020. I looked it up. We had to love God and love people. And we learned about what loving God and loving people looks like. But when God talks about losing our first love, it's not just love for him. It's love for one another. Amen? Amen. It's love for one another. It's just all about love. And he doesn't want us to lose that. As I said in my testimony, I didn't have an issue with anybody in the room either. And I barely... I knew some, I didn't know some others and all of that, but I just felt love for everybody. Amen? Okay, and for sure the love of God. So we're going to look quickly at the loving God part because I believe a lot of us, uh, you know, well, we don't want to, let's just hear what he has to say and then we'll just go with that. All right. First of all, if the great commandment is to love God and God tell, gives us a word, says you've lost your first love, we need to know what that love looks like. Proverbs 8, verses 17 through 21, Jesus, or God says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. If we love him, if we have a relationship with anyone, we want to get to know them. We want to know every little bit about them, and so that we, we just want more of them. Amen? I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Amen? So there's blessings that come with pursuing God. When, when you love him, you're going to pursue him. And so I, I know I mentioned this four years ago, but the first five commandments, I believe it's the first five of the Ten Commandments, tell us what loving God looks like. Amen? Amen. And I know we've seen these, but I've got to give the word. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17 and God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. We were not in a physical land of Egypt. We were in a spiritual land of Egypt. This world had us in bondage to sin. Amen? Amen. The Pharaoh of this world, the devil, had us in bondage. He took us out of bondage. And he says, we should have no other gods before me. And we'll talk more about that. You shall not make for yourself the carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, 
but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Are we seeing the consistent theme here? Amen. Amen. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Don't use the name Jesus or Yahweh or God or anything else for any other reason but to address him or pray or speak in his name. Or for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall do, you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. In other words, there is a day that we set aside for God. It used to be that way, even whether it was the right day or not. But these days, we generally, our flesh just wants to do what it wants to do every single day of the week. Are we giving him lip service? Or are we truly surrendering the day to him and his will and to be in his presence? Amen? Amen. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and then all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And if he hallowed it and we love him, we should do the same. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Again, you've heard me say that honoring your parents is not just your neighbor. It's not just anybody. Your parents are a gift from God. They're God's represented. They're your covering that come from God. And when you honor your parents, you honor God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we go to the other ones, which of, co of course are about loving your neighbor as yourself. Don't murder. We know all about what Jesus says about these things. Do not commit adultery. You, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor or do any kind of lying. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor. So, man? Yeah. All right. So, we know this. We know the Ten Commandments. We understand this is about loving God and loving people. But it's more than just checking off a list. Amen? Amen. It's a heart condition. And it reflects itself in our actions, in all that we do. Amen? Amen. All right. So practi practical application of, of uh, when, when God's saying that love, talking about losing our first love, or maybe we never lose our first love. Love is doing all those things, but we can see right here when Jesus talks to this um I don't know who it was in this case. Matthew 19, verses 16 through 22. Are we okay? Amen. All right. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And so he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Here we are again. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. He's checked off all the lists. Amen? Amen. But now God is going to show him what's really happening in his heart. He can say that he loves God and all of that, but then look what happens. Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come Follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Amen? Amen. So, he checked off all the boxes, but when it came down to it, his heart was not really for God. His heart was still trusting in his possessions or his money and whatsoever. So, even if it looks like we're doing all the things there, God is looking at what's happening inside. Amen. And we know good Jesus loved this guy. He wanted this guy to surrender everything and truly follow him. But there was other things that were more important to this guy's life than God. Amen. That's the bottom line. Amen. Right? The love maybe that we he once had is gone because he's placed it in other things. And he's not really loving God. He's just going through the motions. Amen? Amen. Are we all right? We Amen. Okay? All right. Matthew 6, 24 
It says no one can Jesus said no one can serve two masters for either here it is heart condition he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other amen really deep in the heart not just checking off the commandments you cannot serve god and mammon which is either money or materialism if your focus is on those things, you're not really showing God love. You're showing your love and dedication to those things. You may still go to church. You may still show up for, uh, you know, different activities. But if your focus is on something else, then your focus is not on God and you've lost your first love. Amen? Amen. And it's not just about material things. Jesus makes it clear in Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. It can be people. Whatever it is that really captivates our time, all that, that's what we really are showing love to. Amen? God can see if we're just going through the motions. God can see if we're caring more about money or people or anything else than what he has for us. He has a purpose for us. Amen. And he didn't leave us alone. He gave us a whole new family of people to share that love with and do his will. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. We can lose focus in this journey as we're serving God. We love him and we get into a routine. In this church, we got daily morning prayer calls. We got Bible studies, Sabbath messages, uh, prayer meetings, and Sunday services. We can do all those things and yet lose focus. Amen? Amen. Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Now it happened as they went. He entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Amen? Amen. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen? Praise the Lord. She loved Jesus, and she didn't want to be anywhere else but at his feet, listening to every word he spoke. Amen? Amen. Does that mean... There isn't things to do, that we don't have service, we don't have study. No, but when we love him, we naturally do those things. It's the place we want to be in fellowship. It's the things we want to do. We want to hear from God. We want to be close to God. We want to pursue God and leave the world behind. Trust the people we love in God's hands and look to him. Amen? Praise Seek first Lord. his kingdom, his righteousness. He will take care of everything. You and your household will be saved. Amen. And you will be together forever Talk, giving stories about God's goodness in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. So that's the loving God part. Amen? It's just to, to remember that what he wants is that relationship. What he wants is our... Now, is God telling us to do this on our own? No. I mentioned the other night or day, the sheep don't just decide to come back to the shepherd. Sheep get lost. They go astray. And that's when we do what it says in the book of Psalms, Rev revive me in your way. Draw me back. Bring me in. He'll take care of that. What he's looking for is our heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Loving people. John 13, verses 34 and 35. Jesus said clearly to all of us believers, a new commandment I give you to you. That you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Amen? Amen. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Amen? Amen. Can this become superficial? Can this be all the right words and all the right moves, and yet inside there's something going on there? Amen? 
First John chapter two, verses seven to 11. Brethren, I write no new commandment. This is all part of that first love part. I want to remind us all. I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true and in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says that he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness till now. Amen? Amen. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Amen? Amen. It is possible that we can say the right things and do the right things, but inside there's no love. It's Amen. Gone. Amen. Maybe there was at one time, but someone hurt, offended us or whatever, and we hang on to that, and all of a sudden it just goes dark inside. Amen. Praise the Lord. First John three chapter ten verses uh, <clears throat> verses ten through twenty three. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother, a man yeah. or sister. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And we know murder isn't just a physical act. If we turn and speak about our brother or sister and negatively or whatever, we're committing murder in our heart. Amen? Amen? And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we pass from death to life because we love the brethren. Amen? Praise the Lord. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Amen? Amen. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Amen? Amen. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Our lives, our wounds, our issues, all of that can be, can be surrendered and God can cause us all to be his disciples walking in pure love. Amen? But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or tongue. There it is, right? I love you and all that kind of stuff, but there's nothing there. Amen. But in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love. Notice that. We all talk about believing in Christ, right? Amen. The commandment is we should believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Amen? Amen. May we not hear we lost our first love. Amen. First John chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. Amen. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Not just us, but even the people we have issues with. God loved them so much that he took that price because none of us is perfect. Amen? Amen. And so he brought us into the family of Christ into his body and he wants a body that all appreciates what he's done for them and shows that same love for all the imperfect people around us huh? Amen. as he's done for us beloved if God so loved us we ought to love also ought to love one another no one has seen God at any time if we love one another God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. 
And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Praise the Lord. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Amen? Amen. Why is it too a split hoof animal clean in God's eyes? Because as we walk in this world, our hearts need to be for God and also our fellow man. Amen? Amen. Not only the ones who are meet our expectations or anything else. He wants us to walk in pure love in either both directions. Amen? Amen. Up and down and side to side. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? First John 4, verses 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Amen? Amen? For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Amen? Amen. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother or sister also. Amen? Lights out. The light is the light of Christ, the, the love of God. And he, he, the church of Ephesus, Ephesus lost that love, and he told them he would take their put out their lamps, lights out if they didn't repent and turn back to love with his help. Amen? Amen. May we not be selective about who we decide to love. Jesus said in Luke 6, verse 32 and 33, But if you love those who love you, what credit is to that to you? Amen. For even sinners love those who love them. <laughs> Clearly what he's saying is, now I want you to love the people who don't treat you nice, who do all kinds of things. I want you to love them. And of course we can say, well, who can do that? With man it's impossible. With God all things are possible. Amen? Amen. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you for even sinners do the same? We are to be different, amen? amen? By this, they will know that you are my disciples if you love one another, amen? It won't make sense to the world that even if like, oh, wow, I know that this person offended this person, but look, they're showing love anyway. That's different. That's not the way of the world, amen? amen. I know that this person hurt the other person, but they love them anyway. That's different. I want to know what they got. Amen? Mm -hmm. Every one of us has issues. A lot of times we, we start putting up walls between, between us and other people because they got issues. But we all have issues. Amen? That's right. Yeah. Romans chapter 14, verse 4. But who are you to judge another servant? To his own master, he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. Amen? Amen. We're all a work in progress. And if we think that we've got it together and they don't, we're sadly mistaken. Because even by thinking that way, then God's work is not finished in us. Amen? Amen? None of us got it. None of us are there. God is still working in us. He wants us to have patience, love, and mercy. And when we see someone doing something, saying something that we don't think is right, that we, we come in agreement with God to do that work in them because we love them and they, we want them to become more like Christ. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Amen. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, you shall not take vengeance. This is even the Old Testament. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Old Testament. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Praise the Lord. What he wants is love because we are representing him and he loves even the people we have issues with. Amen? Amen? So with his help, he can cause us to do that and we will. he will see his image and this goal that he works out. Amen? <coughs> All right. As if we didn't already have a heart check, I put this in here as a heart check. Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Excuse me. This is about when we heard our opening verses coming to God. Now here we're coming to God in prayer. We're coming to God in service and providing our offerings. And he says here, Jesus says in Matthew 5, 23 and 24, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and then remember that your brother has something against you, brother or sister, 
leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled, excuse me, to your brother and then come offer your gift. Do you see how important this is to God? It is so important that he says, even if they're, the other person is the one with the issue, I want you to deal with that before you start coming to me and uh, worshiping me because I see your heart, amen? amen? And I want that person to be reconciled and, 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 and straight as well. Well, then when we say, okay, well, that's if somebody has an issue with me. But then he also says in Mark 11, verses 25 and 26, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, Forgive them that your Father in he heaven may also forgive your trespasses. See that? Well, even when we come in prayer, he's going to see what's going on here. And if we have something against someone, we need to deal with that. Amen? With his help. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Amen? Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Therefore, as the elect chosen of God... Holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, which is patience, bearing with one another. Yeah, we got to bear with one another because we're not perfect, amen? And forgiving one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do, amen? amen. Not in word and your tongue and all of that saying, I'm good. It's got to be real. Amen? Amen? This is what God wants. He's watching our hearts. He's saying, have you left your first love? Are you deciding that my love wasn't enough? Or are you willing to share my love with everybody? Amen? Amen. The way he does. But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. That's perfection, is love. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Amen? Amen. Imagine if he's the head and we're his body, and then all this, all of a sudden, this hand's got issues with that hand, and they're fighting each other. <laughs> all that, you know, that's not it. He is love. Amen? Amen. And we want to make it all the way. We need to be empty of ourselves and our issues and, and come into his body, abide in him in pure love, because that's who he is. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through the first half of verse 8. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, people love to talk about speaking in tongues and all that, that's great. But how, if, if all of that, if you got all these wonderful things, speak a bunch of languages or speak in the tongue of angels, but if have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. It doesn't mean anything to God for us to use those gifts if we have issues in our heart. Amen? Amen? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could, that I can remove mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. Amen? Amen? And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned but have not love, it profits me nothing. Amen? Amen? Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. This is a big one. This is love. And if we're focused on putting others ahead of ourselves, that's walking in love. Amen? That's what God did. He put us ahead of himself, against ahead of his own son, and nailed him to a cross because he cared about us. Amen? Amen. It's not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. No matter what people throw at us, we can love. Amen? Amen. With his help. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Amen? Amen. How can you argue with love? How can you have an argument how can anybody really do anything when someone's walking in love? It's pure. It's perfect. It's exact. It's it's peace. It's all these things. It, it frees us. It takes down all the walls. It takes all the weight off of our shoulders. And we can just love. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now abide faith. We should have faith. And we should hope in what God has for us and love. But these three, but the greatest 
The most important thing to God for his people is to walk in love. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we okay? Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. He's talking to all of us who believe. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the people's on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. You all got issues, I got issues, and God just, just out of his love delivered us. But because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, from the hand of the ruler of this world, Satan himself. Amen? Amen. Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations to those who love him and keep his commandments, who love him and love the people around them. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 4, 13. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Amen? Amen. This is what we always want to hear about ourselves, right? Amen. Philadelphia. Wikipedia says Philadelphia comes from ancient Greek philos, philos, beloved dear, and Adelphos, brother or brotherly. Brotherly love. Love one another. Amen? The church of Philadelphia are those who love their brothers and sisters. Amen? Whose priority is God and their brothers and sisters. Amen? Now let's read about what he says to the church of brotherly love. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things say he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I've, had, I've set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. That's anybody who's pushing law and all of that stuff. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. And because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. Listen to these words because they are very timely. I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have that no one they take your crown. Amen? Amen? And what is it that God's given us? He's given us his love. Amen? Amen. Hold fast to that. The Church of Philadelphia, it, and the name itself tells you the key to be the ones who will overcome everything that's coming on this earth. Amen? Amen? Are those who love God and love their brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? He who overcomes, I will make him or her a pillar in the temple of my God, and he or she shall go out no more. I will write on him or her the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him or her my new name. He who has and she who has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. And finally, Revelation 22, verses 12 through 14. Again, behold, I am coming quickly. Why do we have this word today? Because he's coming quickly and he wants us to be in the right place. And that is walking in love of God and love of people, throwing away everything else that's taking our time and energy and affection and everything else, giving them to him so that he can do his work in them and, and those things and pursuing him so that we can be called the Church of Philadelphia when he comes. Amen? I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, 
who love God and love their brothers and sisters, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the, through the gates into the city. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. You don't condemn your people. You just want to guide us into perfect readiness. You want your bride to be decked out in perfect everything to be perfect and we are your bride and perfection in your eyes is love light and love and all these wonderful things you want us to be prepared for your coming let us not lose lord help us if we are gone astray if you convicted us today of something lord help us come and get you to bring us back restore us to our first love let it never be said again that we've we've strayed away and just turn our love or harden our hearts or whatever it is, Lord. No, we don't want that, Lord. Let everyone who hears this word today come to you, get prayer, whatever it takes to be restored in that place like it was at the beginning, where all we could do is thank you and love you and love the people around us, regardless of whatever issues, because we see through your eyes that no one can be perfect, so we can just give it all to you in love. We know that we can't do this on our own, but we know with you all things are possible. So please, Lord, let it be so in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. For everyone here, for everyone online, and for those listening in the future, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless everyone.